Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. Today we talk about the KL Singapore HSR or High Speed Rail and some of their beneficiaries and also whether or not uh, the numbers make sense. Hello investors. Are you tired of going through endless complex financial reports? Maybe you're sick of all the information overload? One, a faster, easier way to research stock investments? Well, we've got the solution for you. Introducing Firo Pro. Firo Pro is your go-to source for concise, easy to understand stock reports. We shortcut your research journey by 90%. Each report is crafted to be straightforward yet informative, taking no more than 15 minutes to read. That's right, just 15 minutes to unlock key insights about stock investments. The program works especially well if you are busy with work, family and activities. The best part, it's totally risk-free because we offer a hassle-free money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied after purchasing it, just email us here within 10 days of purchase for a full refund. No questions asked. Not sure about the program yet? No problem. You can check out our free sample reports available in the video description or comments below. It's a great way to experience the Firo Pro advantage firsthand. Get informed with Firo Pro. You can see in your screen here that there are at least three companies that have already seen their stock price go up quite a bit, uh, especially MRCB and Bajaya Land. Um, the news is that three of them plus uh, KTM or Kereta Api Tana Melayu had their bidding, right? Mm -hmm. They are trying to bid for the HSR job. Now, why this is important is because the Malaysian government wants to save costs a little bit. They do not want to, you know, take on the burden yep. of spending money for the train to build the train and so they are getting private investors to get involved yeah and right now i think it's also the debt to gdp ratio is about 62 percent yes Malaysia. and then i if i can remember the numbers correctly it's like 16 percent of the income yeah. the, the gdp income that they generated is paid for the interest that the loan that they're having so if let's say they take on this hsr plus loan right i think it's gonna like stretch their debt even more la. so that's, that's right. why I think it's a good decision for them to pass it on to the private yes, sector. Yes, and then the, the the interest to save costs actually increases because, you know, governments tend to be wasteful. Uh, it's not just Malaysia, it's just around uh, the world. They tend to be wasteful because it's not their money. So in the case of private investors or companies, uh, it's their money or shareholders' money. So it's very yes. important that they at least break even or, you know, maybe make a profit. Correct. So... Yeah. So yeah, there's some Maybank investment uh, firm that they say that it is quite challenging. Yeah. If we pass everything to the private. Yes. And there's zero government involvement. And the key max here is that they think, look, if let's say it takes about 100 billion for HSR to be built, which we all know will not be 100 billion, it's probably going to be higher. Or at least one should assume that it will be higher because plans never go according to plan. Um, you know, you're looking at 3 billion Three, maybe 3.33 billion ringgit per year in terms of depreciation, which basically means, uh, assuming no interest at all, you are looking at a 30-year payback period, which is not bad, but essentially whatever revenue that HSR generates, mm. uh, it needs to hit at least 3 billion in order to pay back at least the principal that they will have to spend. Correct. And think, assuming they take 100 billion totally in loans. Yeah, the the one who against the HSR, right? They also got mentioned that uh, assuming that 50, assuming it's 100 billion, 50 billion comes from the equity side, which is the private sector, their own mm. money. 50 billion comes from the bank. Uh, the question they ask is, is bank comfortable to lend 50 billion to this private sector? To, yes, to this the government, bank? yes, but the private sector, that will be the the challenge. And, and you know, let, let's do simple maths, lah, okay? Let's look at the combined market cap of all these three. So this is 3 billion uh, plus 8 billion. So you have 11 billion. billion. Uh, around 13 so you, billion. Yeah, so you add 13 billion and you want to borrow 50 billion. I mean, I, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah you probably pointed it out. So that is basically the 
those who are against the HSR. But there's two sides of the coin actually for this. Uh, there's also benefits for this HSR. Uh, so number one is definitely from, from your four hours journey from KL to Singapore. It's if gonna, you were to take the plane. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, plane or even let's say drive. Well, if you also. drive, is about five, mm, five, it's six even, hours. So the, what they estimate is that it's going to reduce to one hour and uh, 1.5 hours. Yes. Yeah, which is very, very fast. Correct. Yeah. So this were to be to be precise, we unfortunately do not have the numbers for people who drive, or at least, I, I don't know, if you know, let me know in the comments. But we do have the numbers for airfares yeah. or air travel, which we'll talk about later on. But this will be a lot more beneficial to people who drive, actually, versus uh, planes, because with driving, obviously, is longer, quite a bit longer, almost four times. And it's dangerous, right? You have to drive on the road. Yeah, this is what they say also. It's very seamless, very safe and everything. And another thing is uh, it creates job opportunity. Yeah. Cost of the ease to travel here and there from Singapore to Malaysia. I believe Malaysia will be much more happier if this happened because they don't need to stay in Singapore or they don't need to stay in JB. Um, yes, that is true. Although JB's one gets solved with the RTS already. So yeah. I'm not sure what's the additional one. But certainly those who maybe stay in KL and go there, maybe they will want. But again, actually, even if it's KL, I would be st still quite hesitant because it's 90 minutes. Mm. So to and fro is 30 minutes plus waiting time, blah, blah, blah. I'm probably going to travel from my house back and fro about four hours. Correct. Which uh, is a plane. Yeah, right? but usually people will see the, the currency, like the 3X. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they might think it's, it's, so it's worth doing it, but yeah. you know, yeah. I happen to think time is more yeah. important than money, but anyways. Yeah, and uh, the other benefit is government is not involved. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can see uh, like what you mentioned that they can control costs more. They can ch make sure that it break even or even make profit yep. uh, for the shareholders. Now, the downside is that uh, it may not be profitable as it seems because maybe the government may want to control the price of the fares that they yes. charge. Uh, so if let's say they are charging at a lower rate, this will actually impact the uh, air flight ticket. For example, let's say Air Asia, they are doing like, uh, let's say around 89 ringgit one one way. Maybe it won't be 89, maybe they will charge lower to compete yep. with this HSR. It could be the case also. And if let's say they charge lower, then HSR also might need to be even more competitive in that sense. So if there's such price war, um, the private sector, there is a chance that they may not uh, make money. Yes, that, that's why the big competition is with FS, mm. right? So um, now I just want to add that there's still some benefit, non-financial benefit, which is, I mean, if you're in the Klang Valley, because this is KL Singapore, right? So if you're in the Klang Valley, uh, one of the annoying things is that you have to travel at least 45 minutes from most areas to reach uh, KLIA. Um, and then there's waiting time, there's all this. It's still going to take you about, let's say, I don't know, um, not to and fro, just one way, about three to four hours. Mm. Whereas for this, one way, maybe about two hours, because now you would have to just travel to KL Central, I believe. I'm not sure where HSR is going to connect to, but probably KL Central. And that's going to be 30 minutes drive for most people in Klang Valley. Yeah, it definitely the time saving is a lot lah for, yeah. with this HSR. Uh, and then the other one is private company and bank financing. So you have to rely on this execution risk from this private company and also whether banks are willing to loan a huge amount. Like just now you mentioned 50 billion of loan to these three companies, whether are they okay with it or not? Yeah. 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 So that's another thing. And the last one is basically, uh, this is stats by World Bank. So they mentioned that uh, you need at least 85 million passengers per year traveling from KL to Singapore in order to break even. Now, how they came about this math is actually over here. Uh, you take the 3 billion in depreciation, the over 30 years, 100 billion over 30 years. So it's actually 3.333, but let's round it up to 3 billion. Now to be clear, this is not exactly from World Bank. This is what we think. Yeah. How we think World, World Bank, Bank came thinks. to the mathematics. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, a 5% on the interest loan for the HSR. So let's say 100 billion, 5% of 500 billion is about 5 billion. Uh, then they use 85 million passages to break even, right? So you're looking at a fast, uh, this is back go and, and uh, yeah, go and come back. It's about 94 per ninety four yeah. per, per travel. But then if you're going back and forth, it's double. So it's like 188. And you versus with the KL 
and Singapore flight, which is around 400, you actually save a lot of money, like 212 or maybe even like 50% of yeah. your money. But of course, I'm not sure if the airfare, that 94 ringgit, uh, or rather the calculation of 85 million is one way or to and fro. Mm. Because yeah. if it's to and fro, then it drops by half, right? Yeah, correct, correct. But uh, yeah, so that that's around the price. And we also did like a quick research on KL to Penang, right? Yes. The Express K the KTM. Uh, KTM is around like 84 ringgit. Yep. Yeah. So, so in theory, they could charge to and fro 300 ringgit. So 150 instead of 94, let's say. Mm. And you'll still be cheaper than currently right. the KL Singapore flight. Of course, we don't know whether your Air Asia's or your Scoots of this world will try and compete. Mm. Right? Correct, we don't correct. know. Yeah. But that's generally how much it's going to be cost. Uh, uh, based on the numbers that we have so far. Yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, so this is the trade-off that we mentioned just now. The Express KTM from Penang to... Because I think yes. KL to Penang is about 354 km. Yes. Then for to Singapore, it's about 358, if I'm yep. not mistaken. Yeah. So it's about like a 4 km difference. Only. And then we have, what, 20 flights a day, right? For, yeah, 20 for flights a day. Yeah. So um, I think KTM just to Penang, which is a low... It's a much lower frequency. You can see every uh, three, two to three hours, there's one train. Yeah. Right? So if you do that, assuming they are operational for 12 uh, hours, that's maybe, I don't know, six to seven per day. Mm. With HSR, you would presume they can double or triple that. Yeah, exactly. It's more efficient. Uh, causes, causes, we are expecting it to be fast also. Yeah. Oh, and another thing is they can probably take in more as well, the train. Yeah. Depending per, on per how trip. they, yeah. Depending on how they build, uh, like how right. many seats they can build. I yeah. mean, there's only a, like a few hundred for a plane but trains can be longer very long yeah exactly okay so it's a very short one and this is our takeaway uh number one is the importance of government whether is their involvement in this hsr project really important for uh body to uh, execute better uh what, what's your take on this i think it's a what, what i would say in investing we call it too hard power i do not know for sure because i hear on both sides and they both kind of make sense on one side we have Tony Poa who says that, look, if you're going to do this, might as well you just give free flights to people because you can spend, what, 4 billion, 5 billion every year on interest. Yeah. And, you know, that is pretty much the amount spent by Malaysians to go to uh, Singapore. Then you got the other side which says, look, yes, it's true, but what about all the other benefits, the knock-on benefits that you can see? So that would be the time save. Um, you know, simple things like people who fear taking flights, people who want something a bit cheaper mm. people who um then of course the knock-on effect of you know building this the people who will benefit in terms of the construction the contractors yeah. the subcontractors yeah um the property prices of the places where the stations will be i would presume that the hsr is not just going to be kl and singapore right they can add yeah along the way correct so then the property prices go there. Of course, the increase in Malaysian income and how that translates into increased tax dollars. So these are the things that is a bit hard to forecast and calculate, but you know it's going to bring benefit. Mm. So there's two sides. All I would say is that if they were to go with it, I think if they just break even, that is already a success. Yeah. Right? You right. do not even need a net profit margin, but yeah. that is the big if. And so that's why I think if they were to go ahead, the private investments actually uh, private companies actually make sense because they have a big interest to make sure that they at, at least if they can't make money they don't lose money yeah and so that why might mean they have to charge more and i hope the government is rational enough this government or the next few governments rational enough to say look yes we allow you to charge more because you need to be even and i think the government will be rational enough because then all private companies have to say is look if you do this we're gonna go bankrupt then we cannot manage the thing and then cost going to balloon and, you know, government have to take over anyways. So you yeah. might as well work with the government. Yeah, speaking of the government takeover, right, it's that uh, they're doing this model, design, finance, build, operate. So the first four is done by the private. Uh, right now it's private. Then the, I think the transfer is that once everything is up and running, most likely they'll give back to the government. Something like that. Uh. It's, it's what I would expect. That, that, that will be a bit worrying. No, but then they'll still be operating. Yeah, right? they'll the still be operating. Yeah. So what, transfer means they pass back the rights or what? Like? I assume it's they pass back. Lah. Okay. Anyways, 
it's a too hard power. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, I have no strong opinions. All I would say is that the gains as an investor in this, um, it's a simple play, infrastructure play, right? Mm. People, and, and it can be very big. As you can see, the combined market cap, excluding KTM, is 13 billion. Uh, they want to put in 50 billion. So that is um, yeah, assuming about, 50 50 percent uh, yeah that's yeah, about four bank. times the market cap yeah um that is definitely going to be be big yes okay and then the other one is a uh, high or low fares for hsr and this one you have to take into account with air travel and bus uh definitely it'll be much cheaper i mean if when we calculated it looks cheaper but for bus not not too sure yet uh probably bus will be much more cheaper I, I mean, there's always like uh, the benefit and cost. Uh, one is they save time, but more expensive. The other one is you need to spend more time to travel, but you pay less. It could be like this kind of like thing happening also. Yeah. Like, what is the uh, your benefit, the opportunity cost in this? And then the final two is basically the execution risk. Uh, if they fail, whether is there a bailout? Yeah, that's the I think that's the number one question that we want to know. Like, whether who's going to bear all the risk if let's say yeah. these three cannot. One thing I'm not sure if the conversation has started is maybe like even allow Singapore to build in JB or rather uh, in Johor. So they collect the revenues that pass by Johor. I'm not sure how they're going to split the revenue, mm. but you know, it'd be something like that. So that allows Singaporean capital to take over some of the burden so that it doesn't have to be purely Malaysian. Yeah. Then we give them revenue, let's say like whatever they make through Singapore and, and Johor is theirs. And then everything after that is Malaysian. Yeah. That's one that's one way. Yeah. And then whether this will benefit these three companies, I think it will, but also it depends on whether they can execute. And also talking about these three companies, I think YTL Park Corp also wanted to beat. Yeah. But they so far there's no news on this. But you know the thing about investing in this infrastructure place is very simple. The share price will never move with the progress of the building. It always moves when the announcement comes. Yeah. Whether or not they build or not, investors don't care. So if you were to decide to put your money into this, one option is to uh, be as early as possible. And the final thing is that we did a survey on whether you guys are pro HSR or not pro HSR. So about 65 of 65 percent of you guys are agreeable that it will benefit more than the cost. And if you guys didn't know, we did this survey in our Instagram. So fire.co, make sure to follow us over there. And yeah, this is January 2024's performance. So far, Fire Pro is about 44% up. If you stay away, stay all the way until the end. If you hold on this program, and again, this is only for people who stay all the way until the end. So congratulations you get a 10% or you will know of a 10% discount code which you can apply. Now, with money back guaranteed, so if you don't like the reports that we write here, feel free to just ask for a refund within 10 days. What's inside Fire Pro? Well, two main things. The first is reports that really shortcut your research to find potentially uh, interesting companies that you might consider putting your money in. And number two, uh, the probability of getting it wrong is a lot lower. As you can see, uh, more than two thirds of our companies that we do reports on are actually uh, profitable, especially those that we put in the viral pro performance. And even if you do get it wrong, net net, the gains from the profitable reports versus the losses, uh, you know, it's a lot bigger, the gains. Yeah. So these are the two, two benefits of viral pro. Now, if you're still not convinced or whatever, uh, and you want to get a taste of the programs, just head over to the free sample link, which you can uh, find in the comments or description. And with that, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.